Bonjour à tous et bienvenue sur notre chaîne YouTube. Aujourd'hui, nous allons plonger dans le monde fascinant d'actualité. Président Tshisekedi a dit qu'il était prêt à vous rencontrer sous deux conditions. Avec le drawer de ces troupes de l'ASI, nous disons, et le de pré-cantonnement de M23. Are you willing to accept those conditions? You start by giving uh, uh, conditions. Uh, it's the wrong way to go about it. But I think sometimes people are playing to the gallery. They, they, they are posturing in the media. And if you talk about the, the conditions, uh, that would suggest that maybe We come up with conditions as well. I won't meet uh, President Sekedi until he reverses his uh, statements about uh, attacking Rwanda and uh, carrying out regime change in Rwanda, as he has publicly talked about. Uh, I would also say, well, unless FDRR is removed from Congo, I'm not going to talk to President Sekedi, uh, and so on, and on, and on, and on. So this does not serve uh, the purpose of uh, bringing about peace. Do you recognize the presence of Rwandan troops in Eastern Congo? Why, in any case, would Rwanda be involved, if it were? Meaning, I'm asking, those who are accusing Rwanda of being involved in the RSC or the forces of Rwanda being involved in the RSC are masking the same people. Why do you think Rwanda would be involved in the RSC? Would it be for fun? Is there fun that would put our forces on the ground in, in any situation, this time in Eastern DRC? So, and I'm saying this so that they don't escape the responsibility they have for why Rwandan forces would be in the RSC if it, the forces were there. You see what I mean? I don't want them to, to achieve isolating or disaggregating the problem and simply sticking to the one of the forces of Rwanda possibly in the RSC because that's what they would want to achieve. One part is internal, the other part is from outside. The internal one being the M23. These Congolese, by the way, sometimes people talk about M23 as these fighters, whatever name you call them, whatever you do against them, they have a hundred thousand people here as refugees in Rwanda. Some of them have been here for the last 23 years. Others less, but including the 15,000 or so who have come recently, have been crossing the border almost on a daily basis. We have hundreds of families or dozens of families crossing every day being targeted and uprooted from East India. 15,000 have happened in the last in this fighting. Refugees come. Now, if you may call this uh, M23 terrorists or this, or you want to sanction them, or go are you sanctioning 100,000 people that are here as refugees? That means you are not addressing the problem at all. Now, the M23 is on the gates of Goma. Um, are you calling on him, on this movement, um, to withdraw again? When you don't look at the root causes, and you don't really look at the big picture of where you want to be, and that is about peace. You want peace in the end. How can you have peace by just addressing one element of hundreds of things that need to be considered? There are regional efforts. There's the Rwanda process, there's the Nairobi process, and fairly so. 
they are doing a good job. But I would have wished that one, maybe we bring closer these processes instead of running them separately or sometimes in the different directions. Chesekedi has been able to manipulate individual leaders, countries, now regions, and almost bringing a misunderstanding, a misunderstanding within and among regions. Because he was playing Sadak against East Africa. So why don't we therefore find a way of just talking about it and, and not allowing Chisekedi to dictate the terms of what must happen because he is even wrong. We know he's wrong. But Mr. President, are you really taking seriously the threats Mr. Chisekedi made during his election campaign against Rwanda, threats to strike Kigali and so on? Are you why, afraid why, of uh, his why, drones and his why, support? Why, why wouldn't I take it seriously? I think he even has the incapacity to understand the implications of what he's saying as the leader of the country. So, for me, uh, uh, that in itself is a problem. It's a very serious problem I need to prepare for and take care of. That means one night you can wake up and do something that uh, you, <laughs> you, you, you never thought a normal people would do. Mr. President, you, you spoke of uh, eight speeches and so on. Um, do you think that, um, that you, that your government, that your people, Rwandese people, has a particular duty of uh, solidarity with, uh, I mean, the M23, which is a Congolese rebel group, yes, Congolese, uh, made up of Congolese Tutsis, and more generally, um, duty of solidarity with uh, the community of Congolese Tutsi, uh, which you say is victim of ethnic, ethnic cleansing and hate speeches. Whether it is in Congo or anywhere else, when, when there is an oppression, when there is injustice, when something, a government is doing wrong, or any politics anywhere playing out to that extreme and as wrong, why wouldn't why, anyone, anyone, anywhere, why don't they, why wouldn't they have that feeling? This is, if they have been involved in the mining, in the places they have controlled over the years. It's not Rwanda, but it is these Rwandans that actually we are fighting and that the RSC government has embraced and is using them in their own wars. Another country, another problem, Mr. President, Burundi. How do you explain the deterioration of your relationships? When we detected through intelligence, we learned that Burundi was actually preparing and sending troops to Goma and uh, the north, the eastern Congo, to, to fight on the side of the eastern, uh, eastern African regional force. I called by phone, I asked. I talked to, I asked to talk to President Elishim here, and I did. And I asked him, I said, President, I have heard that uh, you are sending a force, another force other than that one in the East African Community Regional Force, to fight on behalf of the government of Kinshasa. I said, that is in contradiction with why the East African Regional Force was formed that you are participating in. So you are going to participate in something else. And I told him, I said, this is dangerous and you understand the implication. You are actually threatening us with your presence in support of FDRR near our border. I said, he, he saw to me that that's not true. He said, no, 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 he said, whoever told me must have told me lies and I said, oh, I'm happy to be wrong. <laughs> if I'm wrong, well and good. I'm really happy to hear that. But two weeks after, they were in Igom. <laughs> or even less than two weeks. 
So you can see, he even told me lies. I think of primitivity. We, we, we still have primitive politics going on, based on ethnic. <laughs> and this is exactly what brings together Chisekedi, Daishimie, and Efudera. Um, do you really think uh, that the current crisis uh, in Eastern Congo can escalate um, to the point of becoming an existential, existential threat for Rwanda? The head speech, the preaching of this head ideology, which leads to genocide, and which is unfolding in Eastern Congo by other groups other than just the FDR era. It's no longer an issue of numbers. If these numbers, they have numbers. Maybe when you talk about few numbers of FDR era, that's one thing. But now they are FDR plus many others in the environment in the Congo, including the leaders. And if, if a country, if a country's president or leadership is actually going to embrace this head ideology, you think that's a small thing? How, how does a combination of these factors not appear like existential to us? Alors, Qu'en pensez-vous de cette nouvelle Faites-le nous savoir dans les commentaires ci-dessous. Merci de nous avoir suivis aujourd'hui et à bientôt pour de nouvelles actualités.